which is aimed at ensuring transparency and accountability and the execution of infrastructure projects across the country. Today we welcome all our audiences online and on television and on radio, on GTV, Adrim TV, Mutui TV, City TV, Joy News, Metro TV, Adrim TV, Europa TV, ABC News, Movement TV. The Honorable Ministers of State who are here with us this morning, including Ministers of State designate members of Parliament, Chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Municipal and District Chief Executives, uh, Directors of the Civil Service and the Head of Civil Service, good morning to you all. I want to start by asking us all to give a big round of applause to the entire team that has worked together this year. First, I want to acknowledge the Ministers of State who spent hours working with the tracker team to input data from their ministries and account for the work that has been done so far, and who went so far as signing off that you can vouch for the data that you are putting in. Let's give them a big round of applause. The Metropolitan Municipal and District Chief Executives uh, across the 261 districts who've also been going around your districts uh, validating the data sets for us and uh, taking the necessary uh, inventory to key to the system. I want to thank the Information Services Department staff across the 261 districts who have been uh, taking the photos and geotagging um, the projects across the country that uh, have been uploaded on this uh, platform. And you know I'm biased when it comes to ISD, so please let me give them some small ones. Um, the regional and district coordinating directors, the chief directors, and directors of uh, the ARSIM directorates and the ministries, the head of civil service himself, I want to uh, thank you, yourself and your team, uh, who have been very supportive of this project. And if a cameras come pan to the back, there's a team of young men and women, they like to hide. They are the team who work at night. Please rise, please rise, please rise, please rise. Yeah. There are quite a number of them are ladies as well. Let's give them a big round of applause. They are the people who work in the middle of the night updating the data. Please take your seats for the delivery tracker. As has been mentioned, this is a collective exercise that is taking quite a number of months to put together. There's a question that has been on the minds of many people. It's a very legitimate question. You hear people in academia asking it. You hear journalists asking it. You hear everyday Ghanaians asking it. What does my government do with my money? Abaino, Isikano, and then on day. People ask the question, what does government do for me? Uh, there are those who say that when you tune on your radio or switch on your television or go on social media, all you seem to consume is negative news. But is that all there is? Or is there something more that people should be shown? These are questions that have been raised and continue to be raised. In the year 2020, the Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, led in the answering of this question by setting up at the time what we called the performance, uh, the delivery tracker at the time. And it was a platform that allowed us to account for all the projects, mostly the infrastructure projects that this administration had executed. And as many of you will recall, uh, television stations and radio stations then went out into the countryside to try and validate whether or not indeed these infrastructure projects are on the ground. But the question remains from 2020 till now, what does my government do with my money? A lot of work has gone on, as Professor Piedu mentioned, and that work is what has led us to what we call today the performance tracker, or some call the tracker 2.0. The URL uh, will read performancetracker.gov.gh. So what is the performance tracker? The performance tracker is, first of all, a database. It's a database that showcases the performance of the government of Ghana. And it showcases it through the various projects that have been executed across the 261 districts. And this database has two interfaces. One is a website. So you can go onto that website, www.performancetracker.gov.gh, and you can access that database, and shortly I'll take you through that database. The other is an app. Today, the mobile phone is a very powerful tool, uh, sometimes even beyond what your um, uh, desktop can do. 
and on the app, on the iOS system, as I now am told, the app version has been uploaded, and in the coming weeks, on the Android system, the app version will also be uploaded. So it's a database. You can access it uh, through a URL, performancetracker.gov.gh, or you can download the app and access that database. And what it does is that it showcases the performance of the government of Ghana across the 261 districts, across the 28 uh, ministries, and across the 16 regions. Now, it's an enhanced version of the 2020 tracker that the government put out. And the enhancement is in three features. First, it's more user-friendly than before. It's easier to navigate this particular interview. Second, it's gone through a very rigorous validation exercise. And as was mentioned, uh, down through to the district level, town by town, to geotag the projects and to take photos of the projects so that uh, you can see it. It's also got, for the first time, metrics, data that you can then analyze and do the necessary comparisons, and we'll take you through it shortly. It is um, a live platform, and so even as we go on from today, there will be a continuous exercise to update and to validate. The latest data set you will find on it is June 2023. That's the latest data set. There are some of the ministries, departments, and agencies who have data that is uh, a bit earlier than June 2023. But of course, between June 2023 and even this morning, a lot of work is ongoing. And so there will be a continuous exercise to update the performance tracker. And um, as and when it's updated, which is a live exercise, we're hopeful that all of you who are following will keep an eye uh, on it. As I mentioned, it's first accessible on the URL, and then secondly, now, you will find in the latest version with a data set cut off as at June 2023 that there are over 13,000 projects across the 261 districts, across the 16 regions, across the 28 ministries or so, that have been validated and updated on this platform. And I want to once again congratulate the team that has been doing this exercise across the country. We have 13,000 projects that have been updated. And as I mentioned, as we go along, a lot more will be updated on this platform. As was mentioned earlier by the Honorable Minister for Information Designates, the performance tracker is an empowerment tool. It empowers all of us, all of society, so that together we can track our common progress. The general public is asking questions. Those questions are answered on this platform. Development partners want to know when we give you, uh, you know, budget assistance or specific project financing, what you use it for. The answers are here. The media is asking questions on a regular basis. The fourth estate of the world, holding government accountable. What has government done with the resources of the state? The answers are here. Civil society organizations, sometimes across various sectors, are asking questions. The answers are here. And here, on an academic premises like this, you also do know that the academia is always asking questions. The answers are here. The performance tracker has an architecture of about five key parts. The information is organized in five key, may I say, packet of data yourself and find the data on uh, the platform. Now, these are the five major buckets of information that you'll find on the performance tracker. First, you'll find thematic areas. As I mentioned, in 2020, the tracker focused mostly on infrastructure projects. We've gone beyond that. And so in 2024, this tracker goes beyond infrastructure and features 22 thematic areas. So you'll find, for example, roads, where you'll find a lot of infrastructure. You'll find education. You'll find health. You'll find security. You'll find the 22 major thematic areas that we often query uh, information uh, about when it comes to governance. But we haven't left it just um, at the thematic level. We've gone a step further. For these 22 thematic areas, there's been a further breakdown into categories. And you have 105 categories uh, within which the information has been organized. So for example, when you take health, within the health categories, you'll find something like health infrastructure. That's a category. You'll find um, health recruitment, doctors, nurses, and how that is affecting the doctor-patient ratio and whether we're doing better or worse as we go along as a country. You'll find agenda 111. All of these you will find just under the category or just under the theme health as various categories. If you go into education, you'll find education infrastructure, you'll find free SHS, you'll find teacher recruitment, you'll find 
various categories. So first, we organize according to thematic areas, and then we also organize according to categories, 105 categories. There are those who also want to find out how about this ministry? And that's a work that, um, as was mentioned earlier, from the head of civil service through the chief directors and the directors are saying we have done. How about this particular ministry? What sort of work has gone on in this ministry from about 2017 till now, or 2020 till now, or even beyond now, as we continue to track our progress as a republic, ministry by ministry? And so you'll find that 28 ministries and then the Office of Government Machinery are accounted for. So you can query by ministry and find for yourself what exists there. And some want to see by region. I saw, I think, the Middle East Regional Minister smiling when, you know, she saw the regions pop up, hoping that she would beat everybody else to what is available here. Sixteen regions uh, have also been accounted for, and you see the projects listed according to region. And beyond that, the 261 MMDAs also have their projects accounted for here. So BC will be checking to see how many projects you have executed in your areas against the other DCs. And if you have more projects, you please send it through the validation process, the very rigorous validation process. And when it is validated, it will be updated uh, on the tracker. Very quickly, the thematic areas. So when you go to the thematic loop, we just pick road and transport as an example. You will find that there's metrics on the data from roads and transport. You want to see how many kilometers of roads or specific projects, bridges, etc. You find metrics on it. You also find the categories. If you want to query by categories, you can find. If you want to see the photos that go along with it, you can find them. Where there are videos and audios, you will find them. Where there are infographics, you will find them. And then where there are articles by independent uh, bodies, organizations that also validate and the claims of the government of Ghana, you find them there. This is just an example of some of the metrics that we pulled up from the roads and transport slide. For example, when you look for road construction works, and you are looking specifically for roads constructed and rehabilitated from 2017 till 2022, you will find that the metrics will tell you 11,974.96 kilometers of roads that have been constructed and rehabilitated in the Republic of Ghana since then. Now, the metrics will do something else for you. The metrics will then compare it to the baseline. So if the baseline, for example, is 2016 or 2008 or a particular year, it will run, the algorithm will run and tell you that the change it's about 158% increase compared to the 2009-2016 um, accumulated window. And it will also tell you the source of this data, the Ministry of Roads and Highways. And on the live website, when we go there, you can now click and go into it and find the project yourself, which backs or validates the metrics as you are finding here. And again, once again, I want to celebrate the team uh, of Ghana engineers who have done this algorithm. If you took, let's say, construction of interchanges, the data will tell you that 12 interchanges between uh, the period 2017 and 2020, those 12 interchanges, six of them are completed, six of them are still under construction. And it will compare to the baseline of 2016 and tell you that that is 140% increase in the provision of interchanges in the Republic of Ghana comparing with that baseline. And again, it will give you a link to go there, click, and find those interchanges yourself so that you can validate the data for yourself. Another example, the road network size. The road network size in this country is now about 94,203 kilometers. That is a 20% increase compared to the 2009-2016 accumulated data. And the source is there. You can then click and go find the data. If you went to the category side, it will be grouped under airport, feeder routes, go-go routes, interchanges, traffic management, railway, and you can click and go for the data therein. The second dimension I want to draw your attention to is the sectoral report. So if you go for the sectoral report, let's say you query for a particular ministry, Ministry of Education, you will see the earlier tabs I mentioned, but you see two additional tabs. You will see the executed projects and their details also there. And then you see the summary or the count of the project, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the ones that you also see. These are additional layers of information if you query by sector, ministry by ministry. 
And so, for example, when we say specific projects and education, if you went to the classroom blocks, depending on what you are querying, it will tell you about the three unit classroom block at Lumpasi. And it will give you the geolocation in the Ashanti region at Dancing North District at Lumpasi specific, so that those who want to validate can validate. And it will tell you the percentage completion as at the time this data was keyed in. And if there's an update of the data, for example, when we started the exercise, there was something that was about 45%. As at the June cutoff point, it has moved to, let's say, 67%. You will begin to uh, see that, and then you can track for yourself and find out. I won't bore you with too many details because we'll go into the um, details later. And as I mentioned, the summary of the count of the data. So depending on the particular district, or if you want it by region, or if you want it on the global level, that's the national level, it will list for you the various data points, and the timestamp will tell you when this data um, was gathered. And as we continue to update, we will see the data points um, also update themselves. The third category I want to speak to is the regional and district report. I know many of you are excited about that one. It will also show you the tabs, but it will show you district level data. So you see district level data beginning to pop up, and you can query your district and find out um, the kind of projects that are in your district. So for example, we took a screenshot of Western North Region, and it will list the districts for you and then you can go into a particular district and pick. Bia West, for example, uh, you'll find the rice processing factory, you'll find um, a, a project to distribute computers, you'll find a three-unit classroom block at Bia Senior High School. Each of these have been done by the assembly, also being updated on it. Now, what I encourage you to do is to, as you go through the tracker, pick some of the uh, data sets or the metrics that you find very important. I selected eight, which I want to share with you, and don't ask me why eight. I just found eight to be an interesting number, so I picked eight. Now, these are just a few metrics, eight metrics that I picked from the platform just to highlight. As I mentioned earlier, when you're talking about um, the conversation on roads, you will find about 11,974.96 kilometers of roads constructed and rehabilitated from 2017 to 2020. That's a 158% increase over the 2009 and 2016 data set. Jobs created between 2017 and June 2023, when this data was put in, a little over 2 million. So 2 million and 87,000. And to tell you the source of the data coming from SNIT, so SNIT is the one that is providing uh, this data. So for every data set that is uploaded, then the source will be made available. Government Agenda 111 project, and this is very interesting. Agenda 111 project, when you take the numbers and you add it to the previous health infrastructure that existed, by the time we are done, health infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure would have gone up by 55.9%. That is the addition of half of the stock that existed already to Ghana's health infrastructure. And I think we can give ourselves as a country a big round of applause. STEM education, five schools completed five under construction, and depending on which dimension you are querying, you can then uh, go in there and then find the details uh, for yourself. Over 5.7 million children benefiting from free SHS and TVET education as at June 2023 when this data was put in. I know that data set has even improved between then and now, uh, because June, then there was September intake, etc. But as at that time, 5.7 million children benefiting from free senior high school and TVET education. Rural telephony, a radical program that was rolled out. I see the Minister of uh, Communications is here with us. 1,440, 1,448 telephony sites that have been established between 2017 and 2023. And let me tell you what's interesting about this. Each of these sites in a community has a certain number of people around it. Let's use a minimum 100. 1,448 multiplied by 100, who can now have better connectivity for their commerce, for their personal communication, for uh, whether it's healthcare, dealing with relatives to send help or whatever. That is the kind of impact that this 1,448 telephone. <laughs> Of the grace and let that be brighter, even more that comes from the research lab and you know, fields of the ministry.
metrics on health as we have them. So the first, so for example, on top of ambulances, it will tell you the number and compare to the baseline and show you the change. Have 123% increase compared to what existed in 2016, the number of ambulances that um, uh, we have been able to roll out as a country. And um, the percentage change in how this is impacting lives. If you take ambulance service responses to cases um, for the period under consideration of 30 itinerary officers who have been recruited, you will find a 959. If you're looking for um, the, I'm sorry, I can't see where I am, 360 recruitment of short service commission special duty officers, you will find the source as the Ministry of Defense, 528 emergency medical technicians, 329 uh, special medical intake recruitment by the Ministry of Defense, number of, um, you're running a bit ahead of me. Number of pollinators you find it there. The Nanatomic Atomic Energy Commission, 150. So you find the various subcategories and the sources of that data that have been put there. Professor, thank you very much. And I'll take a final one from here. Yeah, thank you, Honorable. Uh, I want to go down to the district. Good. Like Which district? Uh, that would be my district. What's your district? That would be Ashanti region. So let's go to Ashanti. Uh, let's see. So it takes us to Ashanti. Let's go to MMDA data. Efija Pabri. North. North. So we click on that. This is what has been keyed in as of now. And then as I mentioned, we can update as we go along. So you find agenda 111 as at that time or 62% complete with the corresponding photo. You will find the um, the dining program. We encourage you to get onto the platform to query it and to mine the data. We thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Kutu Obonkuma, Government Minister, launching the performance tracker on behalf of government, it now falls to a very important body, the greatest beneficiary of this great initiative, to express thanks to the government of Ghana. Welcome the acting director of 